How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here. This is the beginner's guide to the Mavic 2, getting started from scratch as if you're just unboxing the drone. Now, every time I unbox or I, you know, make one of these beginner's guide videos, the first thing that I always say to do is get the batteries charging. There's not much that you can really do until you get these batteries to 100%. That goes for both the drone battery and also the remote controller battery. One way to check and see what the battery charge is like is press it. And if you see only one fourth of this circle light up, that means that it's between 25 and 50% charged. And that's a little too low for our taste. This video will be split up into two parts. Part one will go over setup, updating firmware, and calibrating the drone. Part two will talk about taking off for the first time, any last minute calibrations with the drone, as well as a flight tutorial. Because the Mavic 2 Zoom and the Mavic 2 Pro are identical except for the camera, these two setup videos will be applicable to both drones. Now I'm not gonna do a full unboxing with all the cables and cords, but if you have just the Mavic 2 Pro box, then you'll have the charger, that's the cable that will connect to the wall and will charge both your drone battery and also your remote controller battery. If you have the Fly More Combo, then you have a couple more batteries and you have a charger hub. That charger hub does not charge all of the batteries simultaneously. It instead charges the first highest charged battery, then the second, then the third. So if you have one battery that's like 30% charged and one battery that's 25% charged, it'll start charging the 30% charged battery first for you to get a fully charged battery as quick as possible. So if you just have the charger cable and you don't have the Fly More combo, plug the drone battery into this cable and then plug your remote controller into the micro USB cable that is kind of nestled inside of the wall adapter. Orient the cable this way so that the cable is leading downward from the controller, not upward. If you have the Fly More combo with the battery hub, unfold the battery hub like this plug your battery charger into the bottom of the hub and then your batteries into the hub, pull out your micro USB cable from the power adapter, plug the micro USB adapter into your remote control so it's leading down from the controller and not up, and then plug this whole battery charging setup into your power socket. Also, while you wait, go ahead and go to your uh, Android or Apple App Store and go ahead and search DJI here you can download the DJI Go 4 app, which is the app that we're going to use the majority of the time to be controlling our DJI drone. Now that the battery shows a solid green light and the remote has full battery, 99%, good enough, uh, let's get going. Just remember the front legs fold to the front, the rear legs fold down and then out. Here is the camera gimbal cover and we can take our fingernail or our finger and pull on this little tab right here and it comes off just like that. With the remote controller, let's unfold the two arms and right in there you can see two thumbsticks that are in, uh, you know, jammed into those little slots and you can pull them out and screw them into where the thumbsticks go on the thumbstick gimbals. Now you have two antenna here across the top of the remote. You can pull up on the top one and it'll snap up and the other one snaps up too. You don't want to fly just like this, however. You want to turn this one toward you and then pull it. See how it can kind of be adjusted? You can also do the same with this one and adjust it like that. The best antenna reception for this remote control is to be perpendicular to how the antenna is standing up and down. So, if I'm flying like this and holding it like this, I'm getting great reception over there. I'm not getting such great reception right above me though because the antenna are pointing above me. So you don't want to point these in the direction of the drone, rather point the side of the antenna in the direction of the drone. And we're going to use our display device. I'm using an iPhone 7 Plus with lightning cable attachment. Luckily, the remote controller ships with its own micro USB to lightning cable. It's about three inches, maybe four inches long right there. They also come with a micro USB connection, also a USB-C connection, depending on whatever display device you're using. Make these arms wide enough so that you can fit your phone inside of the slots of the two arms. And you can see right there that the lightning cable attachment is lined up right with the lightning cable port on an iPhone. Now the drone obviously comes with its own props and it comes with extra sets. 
We're gonna leave those off for now because we're gonna be starting this out up on our desk and we don't want anything strange to happen. We don't want this to try and take off into our face. By the way, if you see this flopping around, that's normal. Don't worry about that. This will become stabilized in just a few minutes. The best way to start turning things on here is to turn on your remote controller first and then the drone. So we're gonna press our power button once and then again and hold it on the remote control. Connecting. So it's looking for the drone. Now we're going to press the power button once and then again and hold it on the drone. And you see the camera kind of flopping around. Don't worry, that's normal. It's just going through its initial startup calibration. And now we have a stabilized camera. Look at that. So we started our DJI GO 4 app now, and it says activate your Mavic 2. The aircraft must be activated the first time it is connected to DJI GO. It also activates the product's one year warranty. In addition to the warranty, it's up to you right now whether you want to go ahead and purchase the DJI Care Refresh plan. You purchase it for a certain price point, usually about a tenth of the price of the drone. And then if it ever crashes, you pay another small fee in order to get it replaced. You have 48 hours from this point to get that care refresh plan associated with your drone if you choose to. DJI requests access to your DJI device's hardware information. Authorize. And accept terms of use. Agree. Choose the name. Hmm, mode two is gonna be our control mode. Um, that's normal. Now, if you're left-handed, you might feel like mode one or mode three would be better for you. But if you don't know which one to pick, I would suggest you try mode two to begin with. We can customize buttons later on. Um, it also gives you a remote controller LCD screen legend. I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna select Imperial miles per hour and Beginner mode, if you, want to, if you don't know how to fly yet and this is your first drone, you might want to try beginner mode first. I will not, so I'm going to turn off beginner mode. Now here's the opportunity to either sign in with your DJI account or create one. And activate. Restart, restart the aircraft to complete activation. All right, here we go. All right, it gives us aircraft status. Overall status is normal, but there's a little exclamation point next to it, so there's a warning of some sort. We're going to click on that. All right, it says remote controller requires update and aircraft requires update. Now, you could either do this out at the field if you want to and waste both time, battery life, and, you know, data plan. Or you can do it here at home with Wi-Fi signal and everything and uh, be able to charge your batteries up after everything is all said and done. So that's why we're here, we're inside, we're getting this done now. And start update. While this is updating firmware, I wanna share a couple things with you. Uh, this right here is a SanDisk Extreme 64 gigabyte micro SD card. This is the SD card that I use for all my shoots with DJI drones. Also, I use a very thin iPhone case, it's almost paper thin. A link to the super slim iPhone case and a link to the micro SD card are both included in this video description. Now that our firmware is up to date, we're gonna hit start flight there at the bottom right. And our image comes up. There we are. Uh, right there in the center is talking about our obstacle avoidance available. Um, on the upper left, it says ready to go vision. So that means we're not connected to GPS. If it said ready to go GPS, then that means it was connecting to GPS satellites and it knew its coordinates exactly. But right now we're inside. On the top of the app, we see a bunch of different icons for the remote control, the quadcopter, the battery. These are all different settings within the settings menu that we can go to and uh, you know address. On the left are some options for taking off, our intelligent flight modes, our advanced pilot assistance system. And also on the top, we see some of our camera settings uh, our resolution recording in, as well as how much capacity our SD card has left. And the lower left corner is our GPS coordinates and our orientation on the, the map that DJI gives us. On the right is how we record or take pictures, how we switch from photo mode to video mode, and our camera settings. On the bottom are some of our flight stats, like how fast we're going, how high we are. Uh, on the lower right is how we play back some of the things we've already recorded. Finally, you see these red and yellow bands on the top and the bottom. Those are the vision positioning sensors. So it's sensing my media drive array here about two feet away, and then seven feet behind it, it's sensing the futon over there. So it already knows kind of where it is within the room. 
Now we're going to do a few calibration options while we still have it on the desk. So we're going to go to the quadcopter position icon up there. We're going to scroll down to multiple flight modes. Now on the side of the remote control we have a switch. It says T, P, and S standing for tripod mode, positioning mode, and sport mode. Unless you have multiple flight modes enacted, you're always going to be flying in positioning mode. So we want to have the option to switch back and forth. So we're going to go multiple flight modes, turn on. Scrolling down, we have return to home altitude. Normally set it at 30 uh, meters. I'm going to set it to 60, which is roughly 180, 190 feet. So we raise the return to home altitude. Now return to home is when we press the button on the side of the remote control that has the return to home button. Home is where the drone originally took off. So if it, if it gets into trouble or if you just want to bring it back to you, calling it to return to home will shoot the drone up a certain height that we just specified and then make a beeline for the place where it originally took off, where it recorded home as. Raising that a little bit higher will ensure that it's going to fly over trees, buildings, whatever's around you in order to get back to that home point. This panel is also where you can turn on or off beginner mode. So if you started with this drone in beginner mode on, just remember you can turn it off in this pane. And we're going to scroll all the way down to advanced settings. Go ahead and tap advanced settings. We're not going to mess with any expo, sensitivity, gain, whatever, but we're going to scroll down to sensors. Now here's where you want to check your sensors. Right now everything is green and looking good, but IMU, which is the inertial measurement unit, is one sensing feature in most quadcopters and sometimes it's good to calibrate that. I don't calibrate every flight but I usually calibrate at least once out of the box. So we're going to go ahead and calibrate IMU. It's giving us some instructions. It says place aircraft on flat ground, calibrate as shown and do not move the aircraft unless rotating it for calibration. So I'm going to take the drone legs and fold them back up to the body and we're going to hit start. So it's going to go through its little calibration and we're going to flip it on every one of its sides as it indicates. So uh, we had it level and it's gone through that particular step. Now it wants us to turn it on its right side. And then we're going to flip it over to its left side. And each time I make sure to let go of it and let it be very steady and still. Okay, now the back. And now upside down. All right, please restart the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, restart. And I'm going to unfold the legs while I do that. Now it's at this point you could go out and take off and stuff, but there are a few things that might be good for the first time to make sure your drone is working perfect to go through, to calibrate, to set up. So we're going to go back into our quadcopter settings. And we're going to go down the list on the left. Enable visual obstacle avoidance is turned on. That's good. Bottom auxiliary lighting is on auto, which is good. Advanced settings, everything is on. We can turn things off later as we need to, but let's keep it on for now. Going to remote controller settings on the left. Um, this is where we can choose whether we want our phone to be charging from our remote controller. You can have that as an option. You'd just be draining your remote controller faster than your phone might drain. You also have some customization buttons. I keep these on default for now. Now let's go to the next icon on the left, HD. This is where you can select whether you want to have your image transition settings being normal or HD. So if you want to have that advertised 1080 OcuSync 2.0 display on your device as you're flying this, you can select HD mode and things will clear up a little bit on the uh, remote control device uh, display. Going down the left you see battery settings. So low battery warning is at 25%. That can be okay for you if you're just starting out. I usually bring it down to 15. I keep an eye on it and I don't want to hear that beeping at 25% when I still got a little juice left in my battery. So I bump it down to 15. However, I do have smart return to home. So aircraft will return when battery level is only enough for return to home. One step down, gimbal settings. So here we can calibrate the gimbal and also have some gimbal sensitivity settings set up. So gimbal auto calibration. 
That's going to go through some gimbal flip flopping around just to kind of calibrate itself. You know, maybe got jostled in shipment or something. You want to make sure that this is working perfectly. All right, gimbal calibrated. And there at the very bottom on the left, you see those three dots. And here's where you can double check to make sure your measurement units are in whichever, you know, metric or imperial, whatever you want to use. For my video cache, I do not select cache during video shooting. If you want to have that, that's fine. And it records um, some things to your phone directly as well as to the SD card. But I find that my app works a little better and a little smoother if I don't use that. Right under the record button, you see uh, these little switches, these little sliders. Here is our camera setting panel. So we have auto right now as default, but we can go to manual and that's where we can select our aperture, we can select our shutter speed, we can select our ISO and get the image that we want. Let's keep it on auto for now and up at the top we're going to go to that center icon, the camera. Here we can select our video size, our video format, our white balance which is like what kind of light that we're operating under, whether we're inside or outside, cloudy day, sunny day. Style, color, and camera video coding. Not too much of that we're going to go over today. And then on the upper right, we see a gear icon. Here we can turn on a few other things like your histogram, um, your LED uh, auto headlights turning on and off during recording. And further down, we can select where we want to have our storage location, whether it's going to be our SD card we've inserted or the in-camera 8 gigabytes of internal storage. One thing I do like to uh, make sure that I have is file index mode continuous, not reset. If I do reset, that means every time that I format the SD card, all the new clips that I'll be recording will go back to 0000, 0001, 0002. If I have continuous, then it will always count from whatever was lowest at the very beginning of when I first started recording with the drone when I first got it and just count upward indefinitely. That way when I'm transferring over footage to my computer, I'm never going to run the risk of overwriting older clips that are the same file name. You can also select center points. So if you like to have a little crosshair in the center of your image like that, you can definitely have that. Sometimes that helps with lining things up or making sure you got something in the center of the screen. All right, so we're all set up. Everything's good to go. Let's recharge this battery because we're down to 65% and also the remote is down to 78%. But there's one more thing we have to address. Registration. If you live in a country that you need to register your drones with the FAA in the United States or some other government agency in another country, you have to make sure that you register your drones in accordance with the law. So as, he, as I'm in the United States, I'm going to go to FAA's website and do that. I'm not going to go to federaldroneregistration.com because that's not the FAA. That's actually a third party business and they will charge you five times what the FAA themselves will charge you for registration. It should only be $5. If you're paying $25, you're on the wrong website. I usually just have a little small piece of paper right here underneath the battery that shows my FAA uh, registration number. The FAA requires that you have it available without the use of tools. All right, thanks so much for watching guys. Head over to part two if you wanna learn how to fly this thing and get it off the ground for the first time. We're also gonna go over some uh, unique characteristics of the Mavic 2 and check out edrecord.com for some of the products and the gear that I use with my Mavic 2 and my DJI drones in general. Thanks so much for watching everybody and until next time, happy flying.